Before your holy throne I stand With outstretched arms and open ears I rejoice at the words I hear You have done great things for me You've exalted the Good day, my sisters and brothers in Christ. I greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading for today's devotion is taken from Luke chapter 1, verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's always a great honor and privilege to be the one to bring the good news of Christ to God's people. And I'm humbled to have been asked by Reverend Hess and the Diagnet to be part of the devotional team in Fleerov. Before we start, let us pray. Lord, I pray that you will speak through me and to us all today. Open our hearts and our minds to hear your message. In Jesus' name, Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is full of words of praise to God, glorifying God and worshipping God. One of my favorite scriptures is found in Psalm 145, verse 1 to 3, which says, I will exalt you, my King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. And then in Psalm 86, verse 12, I praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. And of course, there are so many others. But in today's scripture, we find Mary, the mother of Jesus, praising God for choosing her as the mother of the Savior of the world. And in our scripture, we see that Mary has gone to visit her cousin, Elizabeth who's pregnant with John the Baptist. And as soon as Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting to Zechariah, the baby in her womb leaps for joy. The coming of the Savior is clearly a joyous occasion. We all remember the host of angels who praised God when the birth of Jesus was foretold to the shepherds. But in our scripture, we see Mary praising God for blessing her by selecting her to be Jesus' mother. But let's just go back and look at the background of the story. So Mary was only three months pregnant when she visited her cousin Elizabeth. And it was not an easy time for her at that point because she was going through a terrible time, actually. Joseph was distressed about this whole thing that his fiance was pregnant um, before marriage. And, you know, he thought that she was unfaithful to him. And Mary, obviously, being innocent of that, knew that um, the baby in her womb was of the Holy Spirit. But she still had to go through the pain of knowing that Joseph wanted to send her away. Um, and also she had to 
endure the disapproving looks from local people who accused her of infidelity. Obviously, people kind of made snide comments and looked at her as if, you know, what kind of person are you? What kind of woman are you? Um, but through all of that, we see that Mary focuses on what really is important. And her soul exalts the Lord her God because she knows that God has chosen her to be the mother of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But in the world's eyes, you would expect that the mother of the King of kings would come from grand circumstances a palace or at least someone you know with uh, some wealth and you know, great uh, properties etc but we see that god chose this young girl of very humble circumstances to be the mother of the emmanuel the god with us god chose this humble young girl to give birth to the one and only begotten son of God and you know isn't this so typical of God you know because God chooses people who the world sees as weak and unimportant to do great things in 1st Corinthians chapter 1 reading 26 to 28 it says brothers and sisters think of what you were when you were called not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So we see Mary acknowledging that God has chosen her, a humble girl, to be the woman that throughout the ages will be called blessed because she was the one who bore the Savior. If we just continue in our scripture to verse 48, we see that Mary says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For now on all generations will call me blessed. Wow, amazing. You know, as women, we often feel as if we're not good enough for the world. Unfortunately, we still live in a world where men are seen as superior to women in many ways, where men are seen as leaders and women as followers. In many working environments, for example, male managers are still preferred over female managers. So that kind of makes women shrink and feel as if they could never compete with the men in that environment or that they can never attain equality with men. And this is where God steps in. God has chosen many women to do great things in the world, just as God chose Mary. When the world says to women, you are weak, God says, you are strong. When the world says to women, you're unimportant, God says, you are important. When the world says to women, you're foolish, you can't do this, you can't do that. God says, uh-uh, you are worthy, you are strong, you can do this, you can do that, you can become a doctor, you can become a minister, you can be a leader, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And like Mary, we too have been given the amazing truth of God's plan of salvation. And like Mary, we are all sinners in need of a saviour. Like Mary, there is an kind of unfolding of our understanding as we study the Word of God and as we listen to all that has been revealed to us through the apostles and the prophets. And like Mary, we will go on and on and learning more 
more of the amazing grace of God that has been poured out upon all of us who trust in Christ as our Savior. So today, all our sisters and our brothers, as we go about doing our daily chores and everyday routines, let us praise God as Mary did not only for the material things that God has given us, but for our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, and for the strength that God has given us to do great things, even though we are but mere sinners. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for all that you are, and all that you've done. Lord, we praise you and glorify your name. We lift you up and worship you. You have saved us from the fires of hell and given us eternal life. Lord, we thank you for keeping us safe and for answering our prayers. Father, as we still face this terrible pandemic, we we ask, Lord, for protection Lord, we ask for courage, for comfort. We ask for strength, Lord, to face the hardship and the grief that this coronavirus has brought into our lives. Father God, we put our trust in you and we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us, even though it may seem that you are distant, Father. We know that you aren't, that you are with us. So, Father, we pray that you will just be with us, that you will envelop us with your love, Father God, and that you will keep us safe. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal your presence to us, Father God, as we go day by day through this pandemic with things that seem to just be spiraling out of control, Father. But we know that you are still in control and that you are still there looking after us and protecting us. Lord God, we pray for all of these things in the most precious and most powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God blessed, oh generations look to me, because your word restrained me, merciful. So